Hello, my name is Bart Rickard, Manager of Customer Enablement with Golf Genius Software. In this video, we're going to go over the steps that need to be taken on the day of an event. You'll see the steps listed on the left. The first step is printing your material. You can do that by going to Rounds, Download slash Print Center. From here, you'll see all the various options of printed material. Let's first take a look at printing T-sheets. At first, you'll see the option to print a T-sheet. That's our standard T-sheet. Let's take a quick look at one. At the top, you'll see the name of the event and the date, as well as the course being played. Below, you'll see all the players listed by tee time or starting hole. There are also some options to customize the T-sheet, like adding any custom field or adding the course handicap. Going back to our download slash print center, you'll see the next option of printing our standard alpha list. Let's take a look at the alpha list. Again, on top of the alpha list, you'll see the name of the event, the course that's being played, and the date that's being played. Below, you'll see the players ordered alphabetically. There's some options to customize this report by adding checkboxes, course handicaps, or increasing or decreasing the font size to include more or less players on each sheet. Another T-sheet option would be the combined alpha slash T-sheet. And this is a condensed version of a T-sheet that includes not only the players listed by tee time or starting hole, it also lists them alphabetically below that. So it's a condensed version that works great for your outside bag staff or people checking in players for the event. Let's take a look at an example. At the top, you'll see the name of the event, the course that's being played, and the time of the event. You'll also see the T-sheet on the top half of the paper, and the bottom half will show the alpha list, ordering the players alphabetically with their starting hole. Another type of printed material that is used for many events are cart signs. If you take a look below, you can click on print cart signs. And this option will get, allow you to print our standard cart signs. Here's an example of our standard cart sign with the name of the event, the course being played, the two players assigned to this golf cart, the tee, the starting hole, date, and time. You can also add the logo to the events on the top, left, and right. You could also print large format scoreboards or score sheets in our system. And we give you two options to do this. One, you can design and print the scoreboards in our system using our scoreboard designer. Change the font size, type, add more scoring boxes, add labels, change the colors, and much more. You could also use one of the many Microsoft Publisher scoreboard templates we have available to you. So if you use my Microsoft Publisher to print your scoreboards, we suggest using this option. You'll see as you select this option, we have many different templates available that are organized in folders. For instance, if I click four-person teams, you'll see many different available templates. So simply download the template, download the player data on Excel spreadsheet, merge, and you'll have your score sheets. You can also use the Report and Page Composer to design and create your own printed material. If you're looking for a type of printed material that we don't immediately offer to you here, it's chances are you'll be able to design and create it in either the Report or Page Composer. So what's the difference between the Report and Page Composer? Report Composer creates printed material in more of a tabular format, for instance, customized T-sheets, team flight reports broken down by divisions and flights. It gives you, allows you to create reports with very organized structure. Page composers can be used to create other types of printed material like customized cart signs, bag tags, bag labels, and other similar reports. To learn more about the report composer or page composer, search for them in the knowledge base. And finally, let's talk about scorecards. To design and create your own scorecards, go to Print Scorecards. Our scorecard composer allows you to design and create very customized scorecards. If you have multiple tournaments set up on the round, the first thing that you're at, you'll be asked is what tournament do you want to use to print the scorecards? For instance, I have a best ball four net tournament and I have a gross birdies tournament. I would like to create scorecards stroked off the best ball of four net tournament, so I select that tournament. Down below, you'll see some library options. Keep in mind that if you design a scorecard that you'll be using frequently throughout the season, we highly suggest saving it in your library so you can use it for future events and leagues. At the top, you'll see all the different tabs in designing your scorecard. And first, let's talk about the pairings groups tab. And this will list all the pairing groups in this around where you can select what pairing groups we'll be printing for. So for instance, if you only want to print scorecards for the first pairing group, leave the other pairing group unchecked. You could also print blank emergency use scorecards here. 
Moving on to the Format tab, there's many different formatting options. Do you want to print one or two scorecards per 8.5 by 11 page? Maybe you don't want to use 8.5 by 11 paper and you have a custom size. Are we printing a 9-hole card, 18-hole card? Are we showing every player in the pairing group on each scorecard? Or maybe we're just showing the foursome name in one line. For instance, think of a scramble scorecard. Down below, you can manage the headers. The headers are listed at the top. You'll see right now this scorecard has the league name, round name, course name, flight name, handicap, percentage, and tee time. I can simply say I want to have one line of headers and the league or event name on the left and this event doesn't have flight, so I'm going to review, remove flight name, and I'm going to put tee time and write justify it. So this scorecard will have the event or league name on the left, and the right header, it'll have the starting tee time. Moving on to the handicap stroking tab, there's typically not much that needs to be done here because the handicap strokes are going to be stroked off the best ball of four net tournament that I selected. On this tab, you could remove the strokes on the scorecard or you could elect to print the total course handicaps on the right. Under the additional info and tees tab, you can, there are some options available to you. You can select what tees you'd like to be printed on the scorecard. Typically, most people just want to print the tees played by golfers in the parent group. You can include the GGID, so that's the GGID that players will use to log into the mobile app. You can include the pace of play, so if you've created a time par for your course, you can include the pace of play on the scorecard. You can highlight the starting hole using a different color. You could also add additional rows. For instance, if I click add row and scroll down to the preview of the scorecard, we'll see my new row. And I could say team score. And you can click and drag using the elevator bars on the left to put the new row wherever you like. And you could also move the T-Racks wherever you'd like. Going to logos, you could add the primary logo to the event, which will be listed on the bottom left by default. However, many people use watermarks. I could say put a left and right watermark instead. You can increase the size of it. You can move it up or down. You can make it darker or lighter. You could also use the advanced logo options and put one logo on the left and a different logo on the right. The Fonts and Colors tab allows you to change the font, color, size of all the text on the scorecard. For instance, maybe for the name of the players, I would like to make the color red. Uncheck. And for the two headers, I would like to make them bold. Make them blue with a bigger font size. Uncheck. You can also change the background color of any of the rows. For instance, for the whole number row, I can change the background color to orange. Clicking on the preview tab will generate scorecards for the first five pairing groups. This allows you to get a good final look of what the scorecards will look like before trying to print them. So as you're managing your scorecards and making changes, you can go to the preview tab and see what the scorecard looks like after the updates. Once your scorecard is set up, again, you can save it in your library to use for future use. And you can click on Save and Print, and we'll produce the scorecards in a PDF. The next step in the game day process that we're going to discuss is enabling mobile score entry. If your event is using mobile app live scoring, then you'll need to be complete this step. Otherwise, you can skip it. And this is a very quick and easy step. To do this, go to Rounds. Enable mobile score entry. Select the tournament that should be used to stroke the mobile apps. And move the round to in progress. So again, two quick steps. Move the round to in progress and enable mobile score entry. At this point, the players, once they receive a scorecard, log into the mobile app. They'll have access to the scorecard and the leaderboard will be live. The next step we're going to talk about is setting up the TV display leaderboard. Now the traditional way of presenting leaderboards is printing them and posting them somewhere on a wall or in a golf shop. However, an alternative method that we highly suggest is using the TV display, which can be used with printed score sheets or instead of printed score sheets. To access the TV leaderboard, go to Display Leaderboard, TV Display, and you'll see the look of the TV display as it scrolls through with the scores. 
Now you may be asking, how do I connect this TV leaderboard to my TV? Well, there's many different ways to do that. You could use a smart TV, which will allow you to access the TV leaderboard directly through the smart TV browser. You could also use a Chromecast or even a simple HDMI cord. For more details and instructions on these connection methods, search TV display in our knowledge base. When you access the TV display, you'll see the blue settings bar. From here, you can increase font size. You can slow down the scroll rate, adjust margins to fit your TV. You can increase this display width. You could add the banner to the event up at the top and increase the size of the banner. You could also add the logo, which is already on. You could add watermarks and backgrounds. For instance, I may want to use a different TV background, which will add some color and flair to your event. As you'll see now, we have a very nice presentable TV display. If I go to Manage Pages, I can reorder how the pages are rotated throughout the TV display. For instance, Best Ball of Four Net is displayed, is rotated first. I can click and drag and move it. So if you have many different pages that are rotated in the TV display, like sponsor pages and whatnot, you can click and drag to reorder them. You could also add pages. We'll see you could add the T-sheet page if you want. You could even create your own content and place it on the TV display. For instance, you could use a collage page, text page, and image page to add the uh, pictures of the event winners, sponsors, information on future club events. Once your TV display settings are set up and the TV is connected to the TV display and whichever connection method you choose, move the ground to full screen. And if you're using live scoring and the round is in progress, as scores are being entered, the leaderboard will update automatically. Now let's move on to the process of entering scores for the round. If your players are using the mobile app to enter scores themselves, then there's no further action on your part as a manager. You can simply sit back and watch the scores be entered and the leaderboard be updated. However, if you do need to enter scores for the players and they're not using the mobile app, you can do that by going to Rounds, Enter Scores. From here, click on one of the pairing groups, enter the whole by whole scores. Click on the parent group again, and the scores will be saved. And you'll, you'll see on the right, all holds are now complete. To enter scores for another parent group, simply click on the parent group again. You can also change the status of the players. For instance, for Flavia, I can move her to DNF, DQ, no card, no show, withdrew, save it, and that will be updated on the leaderboard. If you prefer just to enter 9 or 18 hole totals rather than hole by hole scores, you can change that in the event profile for the round. And also remember, as a manager, you can also enter scores for all of your players on the mobile app. If you open up the mobile app, log in with your email and password, we'll recognize you as a manager and we'll give you access to score entry for all the parent groups out there in the round. The final step to go over in the game day process is viewing the leaderboard. And there's three different areas where you can view the leaderboard. You can view the leaderboard on the manager site, you can view the leaderboard on the TV display, which we've already discussed, and you could also view the leaderboard on the portal. To view the leaderboard on the manager site, go to Rounds, Display Leaderboard, and you could click to expand to see the leaderboard for all the tournaments being set up. You could further click on any of the players to see the hole by hole scores and see more information on the scores for that specific player. If there's any person points, it can also be available here as well. And again, the TV display leaderboard, you can access by going to TV display here. And the third option is viewing the leaderboard on the portal. To do that, go to apps, member portal address, and go to the results page. And this is where players, members, or any other individual who has access to the portal can go and view the live or completed leaderboard. Thank you for watching our video presentation. As always, if you need assistance with our software, feel free to utilize our knowledge base.